Hold up. Wait a minute. This is Carla Renata, a.k.a. the Kirby Critic, and I shoot straight from the hip. Yeah, you know I'm always shooting straight from the hip. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. And I am Carla, the Kirby Film Critic. Let me know that you're here. Um, we start. To me, as I have Um, it's a Whether it's Murph the surf. Thank you. 
Sí. They are, let me find her. The same real something. This picture between black performers on screen, and you can learn more about a bit here in Los. It is running through July. You know how much I want to be Can't be me. 
Also, don't sound spikely, but Always very is and didn't care if it was going to affect me or did what they had. Um, you know, a big prayer and a big bow down. Um, get out of Watch those things and Thank 
for Who took this diamond? Who had it? It was a hot buttered mess. But the way this plays out is fascinating because this man went from being a really popular surfer on the Miami Beach, you know, scene to being a jewel thief. And then if all of that wasn't enough, because that sounds kind of like, oh, okay, I see that. It was like, it was like to catch a thief meets the Manson murders because then he murders these two surfer girls who they keep referring to in the documentary as these these two beautiful girls like they didn't have a name like they didn't have a life it was fascinating to watch this that one is a four-part series it's streaming via epics it started streaming yesterday so you have to if you like murder mysteries thrillers crimes suspense you gonna love Murph the Surf because it is a hot buttered mess. I'm telling you, it is. Now, let's do my little Black History tribute to my my H, my HBCU people. We're going to start with, um, we're going to start with Chad. So, you know, Chadwick Boseman, as we can see, he made history by becoming the first Black superhero that Marvel Comics had ever put on screen. And he has become infamous for that. We now know that um, he went on to play earlier in his career. He played Jack too. He played Thurgood Marshall and Thurgood. He played James Brown and Get On Up. He played Levy in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, for which he got nominated for an Academy Award. And there were hopes at that time that he would become the first Marvel character to win an Academy Award. That didn't happen with Chadwick, but we're keeping our fingers crossed and hoping that that happens with Miss Angela Bassett, who plays the Queen of Wakanda. And of course, He's our Black Panther. Um, Chadwick Boseman has a very interesting trajectory as far as Howard University is concerned because he was majoring in something else altogether different and then made his way to acting. And then ironically enough, he ended up being cast on All My Children and got replaced by Michael B. Jordan. And then the two of them ended up in Black Panther together. I think that is so incredibly serendipitous that I just had to bring it up. Then, of course, I got to talk about my girl Taraji P. Henson. Taraji P. Henson was going to, I think she was going to be an engineering major, but she failed out of pre calculus. So, because she failed out of pre calculus, we got Taraji P. Henson, Oscar nominee for Benjamin Buttons. We know her and love her from playing Cookie Lion on Empire. It's ironic that she failed pre-calculus because she ended up being in a feature film about a black woman who was a human computer in Hidden Figures and her list of accomplishes, accomplishments goes on and on and on. Last but not least, we're going to talk about Mr. Anthony Anderson. Anthony did not graduate with his classmates when he was at Howard. He left Howard and ended up embarking on a comedic career. We know him as that lovable bungling thief in barbershop. But he ended up being in The Departed, a Martin Scorsese film later on down the line. Um, and that changed the course of his career. He's now on Law and Order. He's switched from comedy to drama. He's on Law and Order. He is the host of To Tell the Truth on ABC and a couple of other game show programs with his mother. Him and his mother kind of make the talk show game show circus together. And I think that it's wonderful that he has brought his mother into his world and allowed her to make her own little bankroll in the process. So all month long, I'm going to honor everybody that I know that is a notable Howard University graduate. These are the first three. I'm going to do seven every week. I don't have my seven for this week yet because I'm running a little time, but I, that's what my goal is. All right. So let's give snaps and claps to Howard University Bison alumni, Chadwick Bozeman, Taraji P. Henson, 
and Anthony Anderson. All right, so I have been teasing, teasing, teasing that I was going to talk to the ladies of Harlem, and now I'm going to tell you all about it. So this is season two of Harlem. It is streaming on Prime Video, Amazon Prime Video. I watched season one. I have interviews of season one up and on my YouTube channel. If you pop over there, you can see them. But season two is fire. All of these characters embark on this journey, which leaves open-ended questions for some of them and for some of them not. And I don't want to ruin it for you because I want you to see it. But this is the reason why I love this show. And I don't review TV shows, but I, I don't have a problem telling you something that I like. Um, I love Harlem because we're dealing with four black women who talk the way I talk, talk the way my friends talk, dress the way my friends dress. And it's just an excellent representation of young, black, yummy goodness from a male and female point of view created by Tracy Oliver, who created Girls Trip. So I just need for y'all to give Miss Tracy Oliver some love, honey, and check it out. But without further ado, I put together a compilation of our interview. Um, all three of the interviews that I did with the two ladies individually, uh, great. I think I did I did Grace and uh, Shaniqua together. I did Megan and Jerry together, and I did Tyler by himself. So all of those interviews are up on my YouTube channel, and you can see them at any time in their entirety. But for the sake of time here, I wanted to keep it short and sweet and to the point. So I did a compilation interview. But before we do that, I forgot to do Around the Curve at the beginning. So let's take a trip Around the Curve. Hey, 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 let's take a trip around the curve. Viola Davis has become the latest EGOT member, number 18 to be exact. Congratulations, girl. Laverne and Shirley star Cindy Williams died last week, who was a star of also American Graffiti, died at 75. Black Panther Wakanda Forever is the most watched Marvel premiere on Disney Plus ever. Lionsgate acquired Blumhouse thriller Imaginary to be directed by Jeff Wadlow. In celebration of Valentine's Day, Disney Plus is offering U.S. subscribers the romantic comedy Rosa Line to stream for a limited time from February 10th through the 15th. Gina Rodriguez has inked an overall deal with 20th Century Television. Chloe Bailey, Olivia Coleman, and Woody Harrelson are set to star in the feature adaptation of the Broadway musical Girl from the North County. Matthew McConaughey will voice Elvis Presley in Netflix's upcoming animated series Age and Elvis, and a 30-second reel Something Good with St. Subtle and Gertie Brown, which was at the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences it is in the Regeneration exhibit through July 16th. Michael Jackson's nephew, Javar Jackson, is playing the late singer in the Antoine Fuqua biopic. Smith and Martin Lawrence are back as Bad Boys 4 is in pre-production. Regina King and Freddie Highmore are executive producing The Come Down, a series adaptation in the works as stars. Halle Berry is signing with Range Media Partners and Octavia Spencer, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and Lucy Liu are set to star in the blacklist script, Nobody Nothing, Nowhere for Beast of Southern Wild Producers. Lovecraft Country Reunion with Misha Green and Journey Smollett is on the horizon at Lionsgate with a thriller called Sunflower. Nicholas Howd is set to star in the true crime The Order for AGC Studios. Sundance updates. Sony Pictures Classic has picked up the Sundance winner, the Persian version, and Bleecker Street has acquired the North American rights to Laurel Parmet's Sundance Smash, The Starling Girl. Today on The Curvy Critic with Carla Renato, we're talking about Stolen Youth Inside the Cult is Sarah Lawrence, Season 2 of Harlem, I got all the ladies and Tyler Lepley, and last but not least, Bill Rut Russell, the legend documentary that is streaming on Netflix. And the, oh, and Murph the Surf, which is also streaming on Epix. That's it for this week's Around the Curve. All right, so now that I've done the recap, here's the interview with the ladies and Mr. Tyler Lepley from season two of Harlem on Prime Video. I forget who said it, but someone said, no matter what happens before or after, what happens next is all this, and all that matters is what's happening right now. Ooh, having oh said that, I love that, having, you don't remember that, but I remember. Yeah. So having said that, what yeah. kind of personal and professional journeys have you all gone on since embarking upon in the world of Harlem? Um, I feel like it's, it has introduced the world to me. Um, I feel like I am a present, honestly. And I think that 
I feel I feel Go ahead, girl, unwrap it for she us. Is, no, uh, I feel I feel happy for Amazon that they got to have me first. I'm just being completely honest answering your question. Insty who? Um, <laughs> shut up, Shaniqua. <laughs> It's so interesting because Angie's sense of self is not affected by work at all. And mine was completely and utterly attached to my job. Mm -hmm. I felt like there was, I was so focused and so driven that I sacrificed a lot of things. And I thought if I got this one thing that felt so unattainable, it would solve everything else. And it didn't. And so I went through a moment where I had to be able to disassociate my sense of self and value and love and every and healing from career and be able to appreciate it for what it is. Mm -hmm. And then also say, okay, now we need to prioritize Shaniqua. Mm -hmm. I love that. Grace, you were totally in. She turned all the way. Honey, and this is my kind of conversation. <laughs> I, and what's so funny is that you saw it because that's what went through my mind. I said, this is the kind of conversation I like to have yeah. right here. <laughs> this is my, is my lane. I love it. <laughs> okay, Grace, how about you with Quinn? And just be like, oh yeah, she plays the villain or she plays the bad girl. Or or she, but you know, so it's so nice to play someone who's like light and fun and, and to show that dynamic and to show that range. And so professionally, I think that's kind of been really exciting for me. And, and I guess just, just differently, you know, as, as the girls explore the girls in Harlem, we explore, uh, different topics, you know, one of which is motherhood. And that is something that is personally happening for me right now. And so just kind of embarking upon that and, you know, allowing myself to kind of go through everything that feels like such a novelty, right? So it's like, I've never been through this before. And so just kind of exploring that and finding new ways to allow myself grace and to give myself discovery and to enjoy and to be present in the moment. You know, the person that leaves the storm will never be the same one that walked into it. And that's what the storm is about. Nice. Right? Some of these obstacles are here to teach us things, even though they don't feel positive. You know what I'm saying? But in hindsight, we understand why they're happening. So it's like one revelation I had is like towards the end of season two, I was like, you know, I was like everyone. I don't want to give it away, but it's like I kind of I kind of saw it. You know, I kind of saw Ian and Camille's relationship in my mind happen in one way. So when it didn't pan out the exact way that I thought, I was like, oh, well, you know, that, that may be, you know, it may be a bummer. Um, but when I was thinking about it, it's like, you know, as, as Ian is on his, you know, journey trying to figure out who he is and what he stands for, it's like, you know, that was necessary as well. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it kind of it adds to the theme that we see for Ian in season two, which is him becoming a man, owning up to some of these responsibilities and, you know, having to, uh, you know, deal with what comes with some of the things that we asked for. It was very gratifying to be reminded, you know, at like 39 years old or 38, 39, that and being in the business for 30 years that I could still surprise people and I could still change their mind about yes, me, you know? Hilarious. And so, thank you. <laughs> and so um, that was really gratifying. And then, it, and then, you know, this past year has just been interesting because there have been things that have um, been kind of side by side with what was going on in my real life in terms of like, you know, when the, when the therapist said, you know, well, I know you had all these plans for your life. Well, when did you make that plan? And, you know, Camille said, oh, when I was 18, she was like, yeah, well, how much have you changed since then? And she's just like a lot. And she was like, okay, so can your plans change? And she was just like, yeah. And she had never thought about that notion. And so I was very much in that season of like, yeah, I don't know if I directly planned on something, but life was changing and I didn't really have any control over it. And so understanding that change is not a bad thing and grasping it and, and finding, like she said, joy, which is a choice in it, and finding peace in it, and finding excitement about next chapters and about next acts and stuff. So I've been on, on a on a kind of a roller coaster too, but a lot of this coincide with with things that Camille feels and you know proving herself in her career and going to the next level and standing by what she says and knowing what she deserves and making mistakes at times, but figure you know and all those things. Do you think that um, Ian and Jameson will ever? Give up on Camille? 
feel like, man, I don't know. I can't speak for Jameson. I feel like Ian will never give up on Camille, even if it's like on a friendship level or however it, you know, however it ends up happening. Like I just feel like uh, she has a special place in in Ian's heart. So I feel like he's never going to give up on Camille. But but from seeing Camille's effect on Ian, I'm sure you know. I can't say that's the only you know individual that she's got that type of effect on. So who knows? I, I don't know. I might be able to say neither one of them going to give up on Camille. I mean, she's special. The theme of the whole season two circle, circles back around to black joy. Mm. So what does black joy mean for you? And you may go through, you know, 10 roadblocks. But as long as you get up that next time, it's like you're going to find some, some joy within some of those obstacles that you had to get through. Obviously, we all want to wake up and be loved and win the lottery and feel joy that way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, life and God don't work like that sometimes. So, um, you know, it's necessary to, to feel black joy for all of its levels and all of its uh, complexities. Thank you so much for giving me a slice of your time today. Absolutely. The pleasure was mine. I appreciate you. Can't uh, wait to do it again. Same here. <laughs> all right. Bye. Okay. All right. I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. I'm going to tell you from my heart, I appreciate the black joy that you've brought to me through this show and through your characters. And Megan, yes, change is always necessary to grow and become who you are ultimately supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing wrong with that. And I ain't never put you in no box, okay? Period. Period. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Thank Love you. Period. It. With a T. Yes. 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 <laughs> All right. Period. I'll talk to y'all next time. Thank you Thank so you. much. You're welcome. Thank she you. She's so lovely. She is. She's so sweet. Okay. Y'all weren't supposed to see all that. I put it in, the, I obviously put it in the wrong, <laughs> the wrong video with the wrong ending, but I love talking to those ladies. I really like their work. I like Tracy's writing. It's always a love fest whenever we're on screen. So just to remind you um, about what we talked about today, I want you to check out the works of my three bison people. Let me find them in here. My three bisons, Chadwick Bozeman, Taraji P. Henson, and Anthony Anthony Anderson. I also like for you to check out Bill Russell Legend, which is streaming on Netflix, Murph the Surf, which is streaming on Epics right now. And what was the other one? Let me find the other one. Hold on. Give me a second. Give me a second. And Stolen Youth, the cult inside the Sarah Lawrence College. All of those are streaming right now, baby. When we come back next week, I'm going, when I get off this computer, I'm going to see Magic Mike, The Last Dance. Can't wait for that one. I'm also going to talk to, not talk to, but I'm also going to talk about this film with Reese Witherspoon and Mr. Ashton Kutcher. It is called, hold on, let me pull it up for you. Let me pull it up for you. It's called Your Place of Mind. It'll be streaming on Netflix. I will have interviews with the entire cast of this film right here, Sharper, which is led by Academy Award winner Julie Ann Moore. And then we're going to talk about the 20th anniversary of Titanic 25 years later. Love getting into that. And I just want to remind you guys again about Rosaline, which will be streaming via 20th Century Television. So again, if this is your first time joining me, please give me a big thumbs up to let me know that you were here. I'm so happy that you're here, whether you're here in person, not in person, yeah, whether you're here in person, whether you're streaming it, whether you are seeing it after I tape it, I so appreciate every click, every watch, every person that you tell, because that is what got me that Capital City Web Award. And I so appreciate you. So again, next week, you guys, I'm going to be talking about Magic Mike's Last Dance, Your Place of Mind, Sharper. Um, and uh, we're going to talk about a little Titanic 25 years later and, you know, some chick picks. Chick flick picks for Valentine's Day because that's coming up, right? So there's that. So again, give me a big thumbs up to let me know you were here. Click that bell for notifications if you are on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. And you know what? I will see y'all next time. Be safe. Be sane. Wash them hands. Don't let nobody stress you out. And love, peace, and care, grease. Until the next time, baby. Bye-bye. <laughs>